Hello, welcome back. Today I would like to share with you new research conducted by the University of Seville in Spain where they have developed a winged robot that actually flaps its wings to fly, but more importantly can land on a perch with talon-like claws. And this is the first robot of its kind to be able to do this kind of maneuver. So let's dive in and see what they did, learn a little bit more about this exciting research in robotics. By using a claw-like mechanism, researchers at the EPFL and the University of Seville developed a method to landing a flapping winged robot autonomously on a horizontal perch. Birds landing on branches may look easy, but in fact the act of perching involves a delicate balance of timing, high impact forces, speed, and precision that's extremely delicate. Up until now, no flapping winged robot, also known as an ornithopter, has been able to master such a complex move. A recent Nature Communications paper describes the unique landing gear that makes such perching possible, written by Raphael Zuffery, a postdoctoral fellow in the Laboratory of Intelligent Systems and Biorobotics in the School of Engineering. The 700-gram ornithopter was developed as part of the Griffin Project at the University of Seville in Spain. A large number of factors that nature already perfected had to be managed when landing an ornithopter on a perch without any external commands. In order to maintain flight, the ornithopter had to be able to slow down significantly as it perched. It was absolutely essential that the claw grip the perch and support the robot's weight without being so heavy that it couldn't be lifted. Zuffery explains that the single claw made it easier for the robot to perceive its environment and the perch in front of it based on its own speed, trajectory, and position. All of this was achieved by equipping the ornithopter with a fully onboard computer and navigation system, as well as external motion capture system to help it determine its position. As the ornithopter tried to hone in and grasp the perch, its leg claws were finely calibrated to compensate for oscillations in flight. Upon impact, the claw absorbs the robot's forward momentum, closes quickly to support its weight, and remains on the perch without exerting extra energy. With an eye towards the future, Zuffery is already considering how to expand and improve their device, particularly in an outdoor setting. As of now, flight experiments are conducted inside since the motion capture system requires a controlled flight zone with precise localization. Our goal is to increase the autonomy of the robot so that it can perform perching and manipulation tasks outdoors in a more unpredictable environment in the future. Now what I find so incredibly interesting about this is that we've had flying robots for a while, usually they're drone types with uh, you know, rotors and blades like this, but I haven't seen too many autonomous robots that can actually flap wings and be light enough to fly. And this is the first time that they can autonomously grasp a branch using a talon-like structure. So basically emulating what nature has already been doing with birds forever and ever. And I find that really fascinating because it's a delicate interplay, a, a very delicate balancing act of coordination. If you notice when this thing lands, it perches up like a kind of like an eagle does, extends the talons out, makes adjustments into how it's going to grasp the, the actual perch, and then the, the close-in micro adjustments are in there in the leg mechanism as well. And then if you look close, there's a spring which acts sort of like a trigger as the branch kind of impacts inside of the talent into that spring, it uh, kind of causes the whole assembly to close and grasp onto that. But all of the time while this is happening, it has to maintain balance. Because if you slam into a branch, even with an open kind of claw like this, you're just going to bounce and shake and, and oscillate and vibrate. It's not going to be graceful. In order to pull it off, what they had to do is build a control system that gracefully absorbed the impact of the energy to stabilize itself on the branch. And you can see what I mean right here. You can see that as it gets close, the tail is actually pitching in such a way to cause it to 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 uh, achieve the correct angle whenever it hits the perch there and then the grasping action happens. Here's another close up of the leg assembly. You can see it extends, but there's a control system that's local here that's actually doing micro adjustments as it gets closer to the perch, achieving the correct alignment in order for the perch to impact at the correct velocity and the angle. And you can see here it's actually uh, achieved its landing and as the impact happens you can see in the videos that there's some oscillations happening as the energy is absorbed and so that had to be uh, calculated to correctly impact that energy absorption in order for the thing to actually be stable on the perch.
Here is a close-up of the claw mechanism. I want you to turn your attention right here. There's a spring and sort of like a trigger assembly here. As the perch comes in, it kind of hits this substance right here, which impacts the spring. The spring right here is what triggers the thing to close in just a few milliseconds. And also, we'll talk about it, but in this tube that's leading back from the talon, there's actually a piston in there that absorbs the energy of the impact as well during the landing process. And here is a close-up of the claw in the... Uh, closed position. So you can see it's got closed right here. You can see an optical assembly here because there's a final alignment that's happening in real time as it approaches the target. Again, here's the piston we'll look at in a second. That's absorbing the energy uh, uh, with the, the piston that's inside of this assembly right there. Now you can see here that the closing mechanism only takes about 15 or 20 milliseconds to happen here. The triggering is happening when it when it impacts the spring assembly right there that causes the spring to exert a torque on the talon which closes around the perch. Now here's where we get to the nuts and bolts of the situation here. It's just a little graphic illustrating what's going on. For reference, you have uh, the, the bird down here, the eagle down here, and you can see what's happening. When it gets close to a branch, it perches, its, it extends its talon forward, but at the same time arches the rest of its body back and kind of goes into a pitch up attitude there as it does the final part of the landing process. And this is actually what's happening here. You see the approaching uh, happening here, and then it pitches up and extends the claws, and there's a control system here, an optical system, a laser linear uh, sensor, you can see it right here, that's doing micro adjustments in the position of the talon and the last few, uh, last probably meter or so of flight, it says here. So we have, of course, the wings, we have the computer up here, we have an actuated leg, so there's a there's a, a pitching uh, that can go uh, uh, movement down here, and then there's micro adjustments that can happen down here with an optical sensor, but there's also a very large tail. If you look at how large this tail is, these act uh, act similar to the tail feathers of a bird because whenever the uh, uh, device gets close to a perch we have a very large pitching of the tail which causes the talons to be exposed at the correct angle and kind of softens the landing. And then here's a close-up of the claw assembly. And as I've been mentioning, there's this hollow tube with a motor and also a slider uh, uh, here. And what's been what's going on in here is that as the talons close, this is absorbing some of the energy and the impact uh, internal to this tube uh, as it actually lands. And that's what's causing it uh, or helping it to be stable as it uh, as it lands. So here we have that exposed spring that acts as the trigger when the, the branch comes in. We have a contact zone. You can see the open and closed positions. And then as it goes there, you, you see the, the piston here absorbing the energy of the landing. So it's quite a complicated process to get this thing to be stable during uh, autonomous landing process. Personally, I find robotics fascinating. In another life, I probably would have been designing robots. I just find it fascinating what we can do with machinery. In this particular example, I found fascinating because it seems like an easy task. I mean, we will look at birds landing on branches all the time. It seems effortless, but actually it's a very delicate balancing process. If you look at a bird when it lands, it doesn't just slam into the branch or whatever and just, and just absorb its momentum straight into the thing. It, arches itself back, it extends the talons forward, and then as it lands, it absorbs the impact, usually with the leg structure here. So what these researchers did and achieved was build the first ornithopter to mimic that process autonomously. In other words, there's no remote control involved. It has a local system, an optical system, to detect the branch, slow itself down, pitch itself up, extend the talons forward, and then once the claw mechanism is actually triggered to absorb the impact and balance itself the whole time until the oscillations dampen. Now, what is this useful for? Well, you can imagine uh, these types of, of robotic uh, 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 these ornithopters to be able to go in locations that drones maybe can't. Maybe you can't have a spinning blade. Maybe you have a problem with, with a downdraft with a, with a very large spinning blade. Oftentimes, these uh, drones that are have a helicopter type blades, they have to land on very large flat surfaces. Generally, you can't really land one of them in a tree because generally the blade is going to start chopping up the things around it. So there's a practical benefit, but also there's just sort of the scientific advancement of what can we do with electronics? What can we do with local control systems to make more stable and effective robots in the future? So personally, I look forward to following this research in the future and see what other systems and evolutions they achieve in the future.